as a as a global vice president on a voluntary basis right i also occasionally write on the environment right so uh, fiction is something i haven't gone into so far except the screenplays that i've mm. written for the films mm. uh, but life itself is a fiction mm. so i'm living fiction all the time so mm. maybe i'll also start writing fiction uh, shortly right and spin a few stories okay yeah. um talking about your political career right, right. now yes um you have been politically involved in the pakistan yes. politics yes. tell me about your experience mm and your reason of stepping out of it <laughs> no, i have yes disengaged from party politics but i remain thoroughly interested in politics right the reason i went into politics is that if one thinks that there should be some positive change in our country mm. the most important way you can bring about that change is the political process right where you can affect policy right where you can make new laws or introduce new measures to change for example and this is not by way of uh, uh, a commercial for oneself or maybe it is uh, the pemra law which mm. introduced uh, private media right. you know tv and radio i had the honor of writing right. that law now if i was not in politics and i was not in the cabinet i would not have been able to get, not get only write the law but get it approved by the cabinet and then get it promulgated as an ordinance right first by president farooq laghari and then finally by general pervez musharraf so you have the uh, satisfaction of seeing a law that you wrote actually implemented and bring about tremendous change in the country then there was the freedom of information right. law right so there's this whole change so, in media uh, politics and, and and freedom of information right. now you can ask government uh, officers you have the right to ask Aunts. for documents there are still some limitations but you can improve on that right and similarly there are many other aspects of national affairs where you can influence right uh, so that's why i went into politics however when my party left me uh, you know the millat party which i had founded with president lagari and several other people they decided one day to merge themselves with the pmlq hmm I was the only leader who disagreed with that decision. So you decided so, to disengage. So in mourning I went into a period of deep mourning when my party left me. I've recovered from the mourning but I don't want to now join any party. I'm interested in politics. Right. And I hope that you go into politics one day. Good I'm people are badly needed in politics. Surely. bad people are goodly needed in politics so <laughs> good people are badly needed in politics i don't know which is which but really uh, the better you know the better people if they go into the political process that is how we will be able i to think the right people leaders. need to take charge mm -hmm. it's time absolutely talking about your yeah. career again um, yeah. you've also been involved in a lot of development work yeah. and uh, that can go around rural and urban uh, development programs and social issues So uh, what are you doing right now your current project that is focused towards this um, specific work I'm associated with about 7 organizations that work in about 2000 plus villages across all four provinces Right in different spheres uh, in first and foremost in girls education hmm. water resources hmm. health care environment capacity building and training leaders mm -hmm. at the village and community level right so these are broadly speaking my areas of interest right so organizations that i've either founded or co-founded are working in 2000 communities across the country right and the iucn international union for conservation of nature is a global body right it's the only one with member uh, observer status at the united nations mm. so we help shape improved policies on the basis of scientific data and research that we are able to access we have 10000 scientists as also our members What? the only organization that can access this vast pool of knowledge right so we assist governments the corporate sector mm. whatever whatever so that's the range of work in the development field right. and only today i've returned from a visit to uh, north and southern sin right. where one again refreshed one's mind if you can call it that and eyes with this terrible spectacle 
mm. of uh, the rainwater, rainwater that is still there in tens of thousands of people still affected sleeping on the roadside in tents right. and still depend and and what it is doing to the ecology of our country mm. to the agriculture mm. because when water stagnates for so long it the destroys soils. micronutrients salt content comes up right. and it can have a devastating impact on agricultural so it's just as an affect the living of the people but also mm. trade in itself and and the future so uh, the development process is very vast and diverse so there's so many things to do right and one should never think ji because one is working in 2000 villages mm. uh, that's enough no, no it's not enough you know the is, is, is no limit to what Such needs to be done. Such an ongoing process, mm. right? And it's at the same time very fulfilling, and you learn a lot all mm. the time. Right. Uh, one should never have preconceptions. Yeah, I have the solution, and I know what is to be done. Mm. Every day you learn something new. Right. Uh, okay. My last question yeah. from you: What has been your inspiration in life? Inspiration in life. Yeah. Life itself is so. Oh, intoxicating. <laughs> you get up in the morning and you listen to the birds. Oh, mm. My first cousins, you know, birds are our first cousins. You know that? No, I don't. The gene, the gene that enables you to ask me all these awkward questions <laughs> is, the, is a gene called FOXP2. Okay. And it is the same gene that the birds use to sing. Right. That's why every bird is your first cousin. So when I get up and I hear my first cousin, apart from my wife, <laughs> I also hear <laughs> and my wife's voice and my the bird's voice. Those are enough to set you off on a good day. Mm. And therefore, that's my inspiration. So every day right? is an inspiration Absolutely. for you. Absolutely. The sun rising in the morning is an inspiration. Mm -hmm. The moon at night is an inspiration. Right. So you got a message in the end for the nation of Pakistan. Oh my God. <laughs> I'd rather like to ask the nation, what is the message they have for me? <laughs> they don't need any messages from me. But well, some words. Achha, some words. I think our nation needs to reform itself. Mm. Our nation, I'm sorry to say, has developed a lot of bad social habits. Mm. Our culture on the roads, the way we behave with each other, we can't keep blaming leaders for that. The way we lack public hygiene, lack of cleanliness, lack of the sense of decorum and etiquette, which is such a major part of our cultural traditions. We've allowed that to erode mm. in the name of progress and modernity and so mm. on. That is inexcusable. So people, the nation needs to look much more critically at itself mm. and stop blaming other people Agreed. and stop blaming politicians and start reforming their own behavior and mm. be more respectful of persons who are different from each other, from yourself. Mm. The more different a person is from you, the greater one should respect that person. Right. A non-Muslim, the true definition of a Muslim is how well do you look after a non-Muslim? That is my definition. So that is my message to the nation. Thank you so much, sir. <laughs> okay. It was great to have you on our show and an honor to interview you. For my more pleasure. Pakistani profiles, visit our website, pakistaniprofiles.com.